Stu Gatz here for 1-800-Flowers with all the exciting hype surrounding Valentine's. You probably have some decent gift ideas swirling around, but you're waiting for the perfect one. Well, 1-800-Flowers.com is your answer because right now, when you order early, you can get 12 multicolored roses for only $19.99 or double it to 24 multicolored roses for just $10 more. This is an unbelievable offer from 1-800-Flowers. This gorgeous bouquet of multicolored roses is a perfect surprise she's guaranteed to love. And remember, 1-800-Flowers is here for all your upcoming Valentine's needs. A dozen multicolored roses for just $19.99 or an upgrade to 24 multicolored roses for just $10 more is an amazing offer. When it comes to life's meaningful moments, choose 1-800-Flowers.com to order a dozen multicolored roses for just $19.99 or upgrade to 24 multicolored roses for only $10 more. It's simple. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, enter code DAN again. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, enter code DAN. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code DAN. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz Podcast. Stugatz was eating up the sports news seconds ago. Brady ends his relationship with a Boston radio station <laughs> as we kick off Monday Sports Radio Super Bowl week. He didn't end his relationship yet. He is contemplating never appearing on the station threatening, today. Yes. Threatening to. Yes. Um, I don't know why Tom Brady would do any radio interviews ever again in his life. Like, what? I mean, your wife makes more than you, dude. You really need whatever it is they're paying you for that. I mean, clearly he's been doing it for a while and he continues to I know, do it. But he, clearly no, he enjoys no, doing no. it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Clearly he enjoys doing it. What clearly about Tom Brady being interviewed do you see him enjoying? And and ever. Well, You're, I mean, the fact that he, listen, he can come on there and say nothing, which he's done for the last many, you know, several years. And people still love that Tom Brady's on that radio station. And he loves that he can go on there, get paid, say whatever he wants to say, promote whatever he wants to promote. I guess he has other avenues to do that if he wants to. And he gets paid for it. He doesn't have to say much. I mean, it's kind of yes. cushy. No, it is very easy money. Tom Brady can make very easy money in a lot of different ways. Um, Tom Brady, for the record, is upset with this. Is it WEEI? It's always WEEI, right? It's uh, WEEI. He does the morning show there, I guess, off his Facebook uh, thing that he has released here. And he doesn't want it to be a distraction during Super Bowl week. One of the hosts, not the morning guys, but one of the hosts on WEEI, uh, took issue, said something uh, about his daughter, and Tom took issue with that and cut his interview appearance short this morning after only two minutes. His daughter uh, was in this this new documentary. I think it's uh, Deepak Chopra's son is doing the documentary Tom and Time, where they're studying his alternative uh, medicines, his alternative way of living that has allowed him to age better than the rest of us, and his daughter was in the documentary, and did the host call her a pissant? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Alex Reimer is yeah. the guy's uh, name, and he contributes to the Kirk and Callahan show. He's a young guy. He's in his uh, early to mid-20s, and he's he said this. I'm unclear if he said this during their show or if he said this on WEEI, but he is a part of the Kirk and Callahan show, and Kirk and Callahan had to address well, it today th- th- with Tom. This, uh, well, he's suspended this week, and now they're talking about maybe fi- uh, firing this host who said that. So. Okay, well, this is interesting for a lot of different reasons, then, uh, not the least of which is Brady using his power in a way that has threatened a uh, radio station and really using his power in general in a way that appears to have also threatened Bill Belichick. <laughs> like, yes. Brady is on a rampage now, realizing very late in life, wait a minute. I got a lot of power. <laughs> Feel free to use it for important stuff. I, though, I know, Tom. but he's like, he's realizing <laughs> oh, I've got a lot of power and this, I'm, I'm not even kidding. When I tell you about Tom Brady in public moments, because he has spent 20 years trying very hard not to ever give us anything that resembles anything other than robotics. This might be the most human thing Tom Brady and most interesting thing Tom Brady has ever done publicly. And I'm including it with winning Super Bowls, Def- <laughs> choosing to defend publicly his daughter from something said on a host in a way that he knew would make news the week of the Super Bowl. Because the moment you hang up that phone, Tom Brady is so careful. Like that's Tom Brady throwing a grenade right into the storm. He never does that. He never does that. He won't answer questions about a Trump hat in his locker. Right. Right. Well, you're coming after his family, man. And his I daughter. know. Like, That's, Ooh. I mean, it's, it's, it's proof he's not a robot. That is a, that is a dad that is bothered 
that a radio host would treat his do- say anything bad about his daughter, keep my daughter out of this, and comes on the host and just nukes the interview. It's interesting because we have audio because he came to this sort of decision to uh, reevaluate his relationship with this morning show on the air. This was something that happened on the air. I, I don't know when he found out about this comment. It'd be, I'd be curious to know if he found out about it beforehand and he went in with the intention of addressing it on that radio show and making that station uncomfortable. Did you, then. Did you just say suspended then fired? The host has been fired? No, he's suspended definitely for this week and they are now contemplating, I guess, whether or not to Fire. A lot of people would like him to be fired. Obviously, that's funny. Yes, a lot of fans of that station oh, of would course. like him. And, no, then, just, and then Tom's threatening. Listen, I may never appear on your radio station, right. and you know WEI is making a fortune off that show, right? Right. So right. they want him back. So now right. this is interesting, right? and that's one of the because Tom Brady should not be able to dictate whether or not this guy gets yes, fired. He, yes, he should be okay. able to. All right. Yes, he should be able to. Well, I hope WEI shows some backbone and stand strong here, man. In Tom Brady's mind, he should be able to. Stugatz, so right. be clear on okay. this. This okay. is not me saying it. Uh, and, and it's not, uh, of course, I want journalism protected against the powers of Tom Brady. <laughs> what I'm saying in Tom Brady's mind, he absolutely knows I will end you. <laughs> I will end you. Yes, he does. Well, at the beginning of the sound clip, he says, Stacy told me, and I'm piecing things together. Stacy James, New England Patriots, uh, media relations coordinator gave Tom the heads up that this was happening. I don't know if it happened right before the All interview. Right, well, let's hear it. Let's hear it here. Uh, courtesy of WEEI. Stacy had told me that someone had made a comment about my daughter or something yes, like that. Yes, yeah, you can, um, we were, Tom, we were just talking about it. It was Alex Reamer, and you are, you can, uh, we, Jerry and I talked about it Friday. It was a stupid thing to say. We destroyed him for saying it. You, you can say whatever you'd like. Go ahead. Well, I think that I've tried to come on this show for many years with, and showed you guys a lot of respect. I've always tried to come on and, you know, do a good job for you guys. So, you know, it's very disappointing when you hear that, certainly with, my daughter or any child, you know, they certainly don't deserve that. So, oh no, no, Tom, no, no, no question. Yeah, As I so said, far. Jerry, Jerry, and I yeah. talked about it on Friday. Stupid thing to say. Yeah. He was suspended for it. He should be. There are certain things I think you understand. As a professional athlete, you're going to be criticized for what you do or on or off the field as an individual. But for a kid to be criticized is is unbelievably stupid. There's there's no defense for it. Yeah. So all. Obviously, evaluate whether I want to come on this show again. So I, I really don't have much to say this morning. That's fine. Um, I understand. So That's totally fine. I will. Uh, maybe I'll speak with you guys uh, some other time. Absolutely well, fine. Have, we understand. Have a good day. All right, Tom. Thanks. You too. That's a hurt dad, dude. Like you could hear yep. it in his voice. He's just a hurt dad. Like he's not comfortable with any of that stuff. He doesn't want to be out there doing public things that create waves the week of the Super Bowl. Like he's been a robot for twenty years, avoiding that controversy deftly. And the hurt dad just in the middle of it is like, I'm leaving. He knows that he knows that that's going to be the news of the day. But you release this thing right around the Super Bowl and people are going to react, especially in that market, to the thing that you release. So you don't want distractions, but I mean, you kind of no, created no, it with, I, by no, releasing the it. The part that I'm fascinated about. <laughs> don't, don't do that. What do you mean? Don't, don't do don't that. Don't put this on Tom Brady. I'm not this putting it on Tom. To do with uh, the release first of Tom anything. Brady has every right to be upset. He should be upset. I'm questioning whether or not this guy should be fired or even suspended. For just simply commenting on something well, that Tom well, Brady put out there on, for everyone on, to Stugatz, see. This is you representing the Stugat self-interest of I want to say whatever it is that I want to say yep. without Tom Brady coming in and firing me. And of course you'd want that power. Tom Brady could fire me, right? I'm, yes. Yes. Yeah, well, this is what, but this is what I find most interesting about this story. I don't care about the particulars. What I care about is the idea that Tom Brady at bleeping 40 is figuring out in front of all of us the power that he has. He just used it on his coach in a way that got Garoppolo traded, if you believe in the reports. Yeah. It, we think. like, And now he's using it on these radio hosts who are profusely apologizing at his knee. We're sorry that we hurt your daughter so wrong that punk deserves to be suspended. And and he's like, nah, I don't feel like talking this week. And he turned a shoulder like his supermodel wife, wife and walked off. <laughs> how much power that voice has, man. Use it. I, well, I, it would be, I wish that Tom Brady had been this his entire career instead of subservient to Belichick at every turn. Because then you would have seen some of the crud that LeBron James creates every time he goes someplace. Uh, we lost out on all of that. And Tom's just now figured out this late in life, that it might be fun. Wait a minute. I could do a documentary with Deepak Chopra's kid? I could do a documentary 
and I could just put out there my message of healing and I don't need to do it anymore with the radio guys that I've been doing radio just do it on my for own. 15 yeah, years. Right. I could just do it on my own. Yeah, he could just he could literally turn on any social media thing that he has that he and he could deliver his own message every yeah, week without but, anyone asking questions. It appears that he is just now realizing that he has that power or, or just now is willing to use it. One, when threatened in late age mortality of his career by his coach with the younger quarterback in tow, or with with radio hosts that are attacking his kid and he's just a, an angry dad. Like, what is the most interesting thing Tom Brady has ever done in public? Is that it? Did we just hear it? Because that position purposely disguises its personalities so as to never cause a team distraction. More than any in sports, the quarterback personality is hidden. The real personality is hidden from you more than anyone else who plays in sports. That guy is hiding all the time. Is this the most interesting thing Tom Brady has ever done, being a hurt dad in public? Yes. What else would qualify? Cheating? Like the the cheating scandals? The way he handled Goodell? The way he handled Goodell would qualify, but he just doesn't have any of these on his resume, and I just think it's really cool that Super Bowl week starts with Tom Brady just being a hurt dad. Hi, this is Papi. Do you know that my TV show, Highly Questionable, is not only on ESPN2 every day at 4.30 Eastern, it is also available as a podcast. You can listen or subscribe to the Highly Questionable podcast on ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Don Lebatard. Stugatz lies so much, and he doesn't take inventory of his lies, that even when he's telling the truth, we don't believe him on anything. What's wrong, Stugatz? What are you objecting to? I mean, I listen, I've done this to myself, so I'm frustrated at myself. I'm not going to lash out elsewhere because I understand why everyone would think that uh, I was the one who did this. But I am sitting here telling you guys that I did not do it. Stugatz. You absolutely took a bite out of a piece of pizza and put it back with the rest of the pizza. It was me. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. All right. Magic Johnson has said some things. There have been things said by Magic Johnson. <laughs> People who don't normally say anything are saying things. Today. Magic yeah. Johnson, a fundamentally useless Twitter follow. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Is Magic Johnson a <laughs> fundamentally useless Twitter follow? There's only one worse than Magic, and it's Pau Gasol. Pau Gasol is very bad as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, um, but he said something. We'll get to that in a second. I also want to get into uh, Stugatz's, uh Long-time beef with MC Hammer in a second as well. But Amin's got another theory on this Tom Brady thing. Amin Hassan, who likes to do a private show for me here on text while we're doing our show. Right. He is arguing with me. That is not proof that Brady isn't a robot. It's proof that Brady has a wife. Tom, baby, I'll talk about it next week after the big game. Giselle, mother bleeper, you will say that bleep today. Today on that show, and then you'll hang up. No matter how apologetic those hosts are. Right. And now I'm thinking Giselle was behind the, the whole Garoppolo thing. Honey, I know what it's like to be an aging supermodel. Get him out of here. Right. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Put on the poll, Guillermo, did Giselle say, honey, I know what it's like to be an aging Super Bowl, a supermodel. Get Garoppolo out of here. <laughs> End quote. So you're saying that she traded Garoppolo. That's right. Yeah. Better that. That's even better. Did Giselle trade Garoppolo? I would say that normally I'd be willing, and I'm not saying he's wrong to go down this path with a mean, but I will speak as someone who has two daughters, and I wouldn't need my wife to defend. Like I wouldn't need my wife telling me anything on that. I mean, that's I, the Super Bowl story I want to break this week. Yeah. Did Giselle order the code red? Did Giselle is Giselle running the Patriots organization from the bedroom? Is put that on the poll as well? Is Giselle running the Patriots organization from her bedroom? These are a lot of polls, and uh, might I suggest you tread lightly? Uh, Tom Brady's very clearly powerful, yes. and only yep. one other talent yes. um, in this room. <laughs> Had his name attached to Tom Brady in nasty headlines last week. Well, right. I, what happened there? Because I've been unplugged from the media, uh, Mike really enjoyed sending me these TMZ. What happened with, oh, me, and, with me and TMZ last week? <laughs> what happened? 
TMZ ran. I saw a tweet from TMZ that was Dan Lebetard kinda sorta. Which for TMZ, this is <laughs> this sort of couching. Right. I mean, that's right. flimsy even for TMZ. Right, right. right. <laughs> Dan Lebetard kinda sorta accuses Tom Brady of steroid use. <laughs> I did not do that. I did not do that. Kinda sorta. No, I mean, I mean, just kinda sorta. <laughs> <laughs> According to TMZ. You kind of sort of asked the question. You did not kind of sort of, according to TMZ, do whatever you want with that. <laughs> if TMZ reports something as kind of sort of, you be discerning about that. Right. So is this kind of sort of Giselle is running the Patriots? I, I, I think she is. I think that's a fact. Okay. That's one of Dan's right. two moves. Yeah, two moves. <laughs> move number one is FaceTiming his celebrity friend. That's oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's and right. move number two is kind of sort of just asking the just question. Just asking right. the question. He's on it. Provocateur. You guys have I've unmasked all the secrets. I'm just asking questions. What? Making you think. I'm not saying it. Asking I'm you not, to open I'm your not, mind. I'm not saying it. I'm just asking the question kind of, sort of. <laughs> just kind of, sort of, according to TMZ. I love the idea of Giselle trading. This is not implausible. I have not heard this theory espoused by anybody, and it is not implausible to think that Giselle wanted Tom to start using his power. She knows how to use her power. And sometimes I'll kind of sort of ask, and then I'll follow that up with, if you had to make a bet. And head. sometimes Gun I'll follow that up with, gun, gun to your head. That's, That's right. my favorite game. That's right. Game show. Gun to your head. <laughs> Tom Brady's doing it legally. The gun's not real, but you have to think it is. I did gun to your head on Trey Wingo last week, and he was mortified, What did, You did gun to your head on Trey Wingo? Gun to your head. Do you think Vlad Guerrero ever took steroids? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Trey Wingo must have tap danced. Why'd you do that to Vlad Guerrero? I don't know. I was trying to make a larger point about we're just picking and choosing randomly Why'd who gets in and who Tom doesn't Brady, get in. Why'd you do it to Tom Brady, Dan? Why'd you do it no, to no, Tom? No, no, because Tom Brady... No, oh, wait, wait, wait. First of all, I didn't do it. I just kind of sort of did it according to TMZ. And furthermore, <laughs> <laughs> I was just asking the question. If someone ages like they've never aged before in the history of the position and the history of aging... Might there be something there right. worth sniffing around if you were a journalism outlet bigger and better than kind of sort of Totally TMZ. fair. I understand. I mean, I was just asking a question to Trey. If you had a to make to a bet to win a game show, <laughs> game show's called Gun to Your Head. Yeah. Put this on the poll, Guillermo. If you had to win a bet on a game show called Gun to Your Head, is Tom Brady's suspicious aging a, 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 the responsibility of perhaps some pharmaceuticals? Kind of, sort of, in parentheses. Oh, I was, I was going to make kind of, sort of an answer. Yeah, kind of, sort of. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, no, yes, kinda, yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. Very good. Can the second question be the same question about Roger Federer? No, it cannot. I will not allow it. <laughs> okay. Time for Dan to reluctantly take part in something that Stugatz couldn't be happier doing. <laughs> Stugatz trying to get on TMZ now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so jealous. He's I mean, scanning. I want to kind of sort of like, He's Keanu. He's Keanu Reeves in the Matrix when the guns are all coming by. He's scanning. He, did you see what just happened there? Bunch of old suspicious greats just flew by Stugatz and he grabbed Federer. <laughs> the I most just, recent. Ooh, where do, how do I grab the one that allows me to get on TMZ with a kind of sort of accusation? Want to be clear? I'm just asking a question. Open up your mind, trying to make you think. Don Lebatard is saving, saving the best. best. Yes, maybe no. Stugatz is, is saving, saving the best. best. Yes, maybe no. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatard show appear via the Shell Penzo performance line. Get the feeling of being rewarded with gold status at Shell with the Fuel Rewards program. Download the Fuel Rewards app. Join and start saving five cents a gallon today. Here's your Sports Center update. Australian Open Finals for the women. Caroline Wozniacki defeated Simona Halep to win her first Grand Slam title. For the men, Roger Federer defeated Marin Cilic, winning the, his 20th Grand Slam championship. And finally, I bleep you not, CBS has ordered a pilot. For a Magnum PI reboot. You gotta be, you, that can't be true. <laughs> that is You're true. You're making that up. I am not making it up. <laughs> For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Should CBS be ashamed of itself? <laughs> I mean, you're just trafficking in old people. Right. 
I can tell you yesterday they should have been ashamed of themselves because I had invested four hours in watching golf because Tiger Woods was back and Jason Day and there was a playoff and Jason Day was in the playoff and I love Jason Day and they cut me off after investing four hours. You know what CBS did? Cut me off and went to the red carpet at the Grammys. Not the Grammys, the pregame to the Grammys while a main event was going on. Ashamed of themselves. Seriously. That is a terrible job. Okay, but now you've contaminated the poll because now the people voting on the poll will be wondering whether CBS should be ashamed of itself for yesterday or whether CBS should be ashamed of, uh, of itself for not having an original idea since 1982. Totally fair. My apologies. You want to, uh, how do we, uh, how do we undo what I just did? It's done. Oh. It's over. It's too late. We got to keep it moving. All right. It, there's no fixing it. We just got to move on. All right. I had to get that out there, man. I'm I understand. Sorry. It was very, it was very important to yes. you. Yes, I know. You know your network skews old when you're rebooting a show whose star stars on another show on your network. Yeah, right. It's just, now put it keep, back on the pole. No, man. they should keep doing that. They should keep doing that with, like, Murphy Brown. <laughs> just do the Murphy Brown remake. Wait, just take out all their old stars. They're the seven of them. Yeah, they'll be Quantum Leap while Scott Bakula stars in, in NCIS New Orleans. That's, That's right. a good show. Um, I want to ask you guys what the radio station in Boston should do now that Tom Brady is threatening a business relationship with them on air. I don't know how valuable the host is to the station. That would be an important part of it. Well, Tom Brady's show is going to be more valuable than whoever that host is. It's going to be more quantifiably valuable. Sponsors will pay for it than what whatever it is that that show that whatever it is that host earns in money if the way that we're doing this is based on money and not you know you caving in the face of tom brady well here's what we know he makes contributions to kirk and callahan but his name is neither kirk nor callahan mm-hmm. right so but does he have his own show later in the day i think he I'm might not, I mean, something like it that. sounds like just and i know nothing of this nothing but it sounds like none he does other do. stuff not for weei of- just based on how radio works i, I you know what i'm I don't think he should be fired. Um, I'm not even certain he should be suspended. But I guess having sat in that seat and made, you know, I was the vice president and general manager of a station down here and made a hundred bad decisions, wrong decisions. More than that. Thousands, millions that I regret. And I wish I could go back and, and undo them, um, including the firing of Allison Turner. <laughs> Simply because someone sent me an email that I was not supposed to see with her true thoughts about me on that email. Um, I think this guy, I really, I, I would hope that WEEI, uh, learn from my mistakes, have some backbone. Your host said something, not saying it's great, and Tom Brady has every right to be upset, but it's not a fireable offense, not in my opinion. I, unless Tom Brady says it is. Uh, yeah. I'm saying that's the problem. That's, I mean, we had the Dan Marino show once upon a time. That's one of the things that's interesting <laughs> about it. Tom Brady absolutely has the power to end him, and I wonder how much Giselle wishes to end him. <laughs> <laughs> because it strikes me as something Giselle would be more likely to do and more comfortable doing than Tom was. Right. But listen, I, t- Tom Brady, there's some stuff. I know we, you know, Captain America, he seems, he appears to be perfect, and for the most part, he is. But he's done some stuff along the way, which is questionable. Okay? Like, you're going to get a guy. You have everything, Tom. Wait a minute. And you're going to get a guy that's quit, fired. God's quit fighting on behalf of the little guy in this circumstance. Uh, like, the little guy was wrong and suspended and should have been suspended. Don't attack kids. I know. Like, y- yes, I agree with that. You know when you don't. You don't want any ramifications. No. You don't want any ramifications to anything you say. That's true. That's where we are with your, 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 your agenda here is pretty clear. Well, I, but I also have kids. I understand why Tom would be upset and come out and say something. Well, but, here, I mean, stop that. But you said it, okay? And if you want to continue a relationship with the station, then do it. And if you don't, then don't. But don't get a guy fired. Over okay, it. and understood. And the points you're making are valid ones. But this is when this stuff close hits close to home, any of it, it tends to alter your perspective. For example, Stugat says he was conflicted this weekend watching Tom Izzo get caught in some of these flames at Michigan State. And Tom Izzo is a friend of the show. We enjoy Tom Izzo's company. Tom Izzo plays the accordion. He comes on our show and he plays his Christmas carols. He's super gregarious. But we just swallowed the chancellor at the university because she doesn't have any emotional appeal to us. We don't know her. We don't know her in any meaningful way. The people there said she did good work. But the angry mob came a-calling, and on this particular crime, no one survives it. What happens at Penn State is that no one survives it. Everyone gets right. stained. Yes. Now, 
I don't think Michigan State is going to get the death penalty only because the NCAA realized it overstepped its bounds last time by getting involved in the Penn State stuff, giving all sorts of penalties that it then had to rescind right. because they were just following the angry mob uh, down the street. The NCAA did the popular easy thing, which is you get the maximum penalties and then couldn't actually enforce any of it. Sure. And then real, re, re, just went back and changed it because the NCAA was outside of its jurisdiction on these particular crimes, child sex crimes. Yes. Um, and you're right. I was conflicted over the weekend because Lord knows I've gone after our Bryles, uh, for some of the same stuff. And, but Tom Izzo was a friend of the show and he's been good to our show. And I've had private conversations, one or two with Tom Izzo, where he's been very nice to me. But, you know, if Tom Izzo was aware of some of this stuff and didn't do anything about it and now wants to be part of the solution, then sorry. You know, I happen to agree with everyone who says, yep, they should all be fired. Well, I, I don't, but it's why I was having this conversation with you last week when I was asking you about some of these things, understanding the heinous nature of these crimes. And I was asking you, are you okay with the absolute that everyone goes down when these crimes are near a university? Everyone. That they climb up and they, I mean, man, Sugat, if Joe Paterno can't survive it, no one can. Agreed. Like, it can't be survived. And I'm talking about Joe Paterno couldn't fi- survive it in his career, and he couldn't survive it in actual life. I'm convinced it killed the man Right at the end. Um, so Tom Izzo has a relationship with the show, and that relationship is an accordion that he plays, and he comes on every year. And this is the situation that Sa- Sarah Silverman finds herself in when she's on stage and she's being asked for comment on Louis C.K. And Louis C.K. is a friend, but Sarah Silverman believes in the idea very strongly that women are not to be victims, not even <laughs> with her friends. And so where do you go? When you love Louis C.K., but you are an activist for women and should be a strong one. And so she was conflicted because she's got a relationship that sees many sides of this person. The only side of this Tom Izzo that this show really knows is this side, this fun, silly side. All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah. We... Key. Judgment free. That's Go ahead. all right. Judgment free, coach. Judgment free. I ain't singing. You're, you're the one singing. The, we want you want us to sing. see where that doesn't really fit with this story no like this particular story makes it kind of hard when these human things arrive at your doorstep and i just thought of something Stu gods i hadn't thought of it in 12 or 13 years when we started our radio station locally in miami there was a dude who worked on the staff who eventually got caught up in some child sex crimes ended up getting caught by the police ended up i believe committing suicide because he knew what he was headed for in jail and now i ask you to think about all of the people involved in the hiring of that person and that person being able to do what he did and to think about the idea of and i'm good with it if you decide every time child sex crimes near a university everyone goes if that's what you decide that's how we're dealing with pedophilia and that's how we're dr- dealing with it in the criminal system. We just throw it in jail, throw it in a corner. No, I don't want to deal with that. I don't know what to do with being attracted to kids. Go rot in jail. I don't care what happens after that. If that's going to be your standard over there with the penalty, then the standard has to be to hold people accountable to it, right? And the flames have to climb and grab everybody. Yes. And so we're going to go two for two on this one, right? Because Tom Izzo was off to the side. He wasn't quite as... He was off to the side. He's not where Paterno was, and he's not where Sandusky was. But 
There's some things there that, uh, upon scrutiny, don't feel good. No, he's he's kind of where Art Bryles was, right? That's where that's where Tom well, Izzo uh, no, Art and D'Onofrio, for that matter, uh, the football coach. Well, but uh, I mean. I mean, Dan, what, what happened yesterday after is when uh, someone from outside the lines, uh, Tisha Thompson, did a, an amazing job, just thundered forward with questions about this investigation and all the stuff going on. The fact that Tom Izzo, in 2010, Travis Walton was charged, an assistant coach, with assault and battery for punching a female student in the face. There were witnesses. She was injured. I, I'm literally reading from Tisha Thompson's questionnaire, and Tom Izzo kept him on the staff. That is a terrible job by him. It's uh, D'Antonio. You made him D'Onofrio. Oh, that's a fun. Say hello to my little friend. Dollar. That's not a fine for you. You only yeah, get fined no. when you have fines yeah, that no. aren't fine, so then that becomes a fine. At least you know I have some money to it. Don Libertard. This is the Nature Boy Ric Flair. 16 times your world heavyweight champion. Stugats. The limousine riding. Kiss stealing. Wheeling, dealing, jet. Flying son of a gun, ladies and gentlemen, Nature Boy, Dan Lebatard. Woo! Woo! This is the Dan Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. It's interesting to watch the rules change in real time. Things that weren't allowed, uh, that aren't allowed now, but were allowed once upon a time. The idea of taking guys on your staff or players who have domestic abuse issues in their past. But a couple of years ago, that's something every team would have done, every college would have done. And now you've gotten a situation that is reversed so strongly that Stugatz, once these particular flames start climbing around your university, right. child sex allegations, either at Penn State or Michigan State, once those allegations start climbing, I would argue that, hey, you need to take on a case-by-case basis all of the details involved. Who knew what? What did they know? How did they enable? But once the reporters descend on the place, Dugats, that has this flames, these kinds of flames around it, yep. we start going through the scrutiny of people's pasts, and we're going to find what we found on Izzo. We're going to find some of the stuff that was tolerated before in sports. Guy punches woman in the face and gets a second chance. That's something that... What, how long ago was that not necessarily okay, but an understood construct in sports? Guy with domestic assault allegation is guy who deserves a second chance. That was the case, what, four, five years ago? Well, this particular case with Travis Walton happened in 2010. No, but this is what I'm asking you. Right. What I'm asking, that's, that's specifically the reason that I'm asking you. Tom Izzo was interrogated yesterday during a press conference as if he were guilty of something. It was a good job by the reporter, but with these flames, every man in power right now in America with these flames is going to be guilty of something. If we start inspecting the stuff from 2010 when that was a normal sports universe, guy on a staff has an issue. He's got a DUI. He's got a domestic abuse. He's got an issue, but we're going to get, we're going to rehab him. This is going to be the place that he finds himself in sports. And now it's bypassing that guy and it's going straight to the top of the legends with these crimes. And it should. Yes. But what I would ask you to do after that is inspect case by case what's happening there with Tom Izzo. What did he know? When did he know it? And Take into context as well the climate, 2010 being different than it was now. It's it was just as wrong back then, but for some reason was more accepted. As as sports is where you go and get forgiveness. And I, I and the reason I ask you to do all of this is only because Stugatz. In times like this, there is no one who can defend a Tom Izzo. Everyone needs to just shut up and listen. And the and the problem is no one can rise up to point out to you. The way that Cam Newton did for Jerry Richardson. Like, that's not something people do. It, ve- it becomes very hard to be a friend in these times right. to the person who's accused of the thing that will make the angry mob turn on you next. Sure. I mean, you even have Magic Johnson tweeting out, if anyone knew about this and didn't do anything about it, athletic department all the way up to the NCAA, board of trustees, everything, they should all be fired. Yeah, but the important part is the if at the front of that. Like, I do think those things need to be case by case. Of course. Because from what I could gather of what I read about the chancellor of Michigan State, like, there wasn't a lot that she did wrong. 
as far as I could tell. But a lot of wrong happened under her watch. Correct, yes. correct, correct. And if it costs the job of the chancellor, then how can it not also cost every coach? Who can withstand it? If Paterno can't withstand it and the chancellor, who otherwise acted okay, can't withstand it, then why the hell should the basketball coach, even if he's innocent? I can't imagine he will withstand I, it. I can't imagine. I don't know. I, I don't even know if he's in trouble right now. I just saw this happen with Penn State, and I saw how it happened, and I saw how quickly it turned from the trustees defending Joe Paterno to realizing they could not simply put a voice on anything that sounded like a defense of these most unspeakable crimes.